Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, I'm a big believer of community. I guess harder without the support of your family and friends and the people you rely on if you've had a bad day. Yeah, definitely. I think it's great to have a support network in case anything goes wrong in life or, you know, just someone to share experiences with. And without that, then, yeah, I feel like you could really struggle. I feel there's emptiness, right? It's psychologically we need to be around people. Family and friends support and having them backing me in my decisions. Um, and just overall being able to take life's obstacles and handle them in the best way I can. Without community and friendship, life is not worth living. We are constantly looking for ways to keep in touch with those around us. Even our technology is focused on connecting us with one another. It's because God planted a need in our hearts to create deeper, meaningful relationships. When God created Adam, He saw that it was not good that man should be alone. So He created Eve as a partner for Adam. Because God is a relational God who made us in His own image, we too seek meaningful relationships and desire to be in communion with others. The I Am series has been intentionally created around the fact that we can reach our greatest potential in a supportive community. The act of eating together, praying together, and sharing life with each other is the same model Jesus used when He led His own group of friends, the disciples, on a path of clearer understanding of who God is. I used to think church was just a boring old building my parents would drag me to on Saturdays. The old hymns, the uncomfortable wooden seats. I didn't realize at the time it wasn't the bricks and mortar which made the church, but the people who gathered together, united by their love of Christ. Jesus tells us in John 15, 5, you are my friends. Church is about reconnecting each week with friends to worship Jesus and encourage each other as we continue to grow in faith together. Church acts as an intrinsic part of our faith with God. Ephesians 2.22 tells us when we join together in community, we are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit unites us in a common goal to love one another by revealing God's kingdom to the world through our words and actions. See how very much our Father loves us, for He calls us His children, and that is what we are. When we accept God as our Heavenly Father and what Jesus did for us at the cross, we join a spiritual family, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Just as we are each born into our own families, Baptism acts as a spiritual rebirth, publicly declaring our choice to become children of God. Jesus died for our sins, entered the tomb, and was resurrected on the third day. This is symbolized in baptism through entering the water and re-emerging into a new life in Christ. Our old sinful self is washed away and we become a new person in Jesus. After finishing my university studies, I really wanted to get out and explore the world. It was such an important time of my life and taught me so much about myself and the phenomenal world God made. Everywhere I went, I was fortunate to experience the love of God's people. Near the end of my trip, I spent a week in Hawaii. Even though there were still thousands of miles of ocean which separated me from home, God led me to a local church that Sabbath. While I was there, I was overwhelmed by the love and hospitality shown to me by my brothers and sisters in Christ. They made me feel so intimately included in the service and afterwards took me to their home to share a cooked meal. It's this experience in particular which constantly reminds me that the family of God isn't just within the four walls of a building, but spread throughout the world. No matter where I am in the world, I know I can walk into a church and feel completely at home. My name is Joseph, this is my wife Camilla, and we are both church planters and Bible workers here in the city of Newcastle, Australia. And I want to share with you a story about a 10-year-old boy, and he started uh, having Bible studies with uh, one of the volunteers that were uh, working with us. 
he was diagnosed actually with um, child depression. So uh, he was in the 95th percentile. That means like he was very depressed. In the beginning, the boy was very agitated, was aggressive, you know, his attention span was so low. Uh, but when he started to come to the church, we could see week after week that he was starting to change. He was starting to become more loving, he started to become more calm, he started to become uh, more interested. It was just two or three months after he started taking Bible studies that the father came to the church and he shared a testimony saying that not even the psychologist who he had seen for now two years uh, was understanding what was going on with him because the improvements that he was having, I think he had an 80% improvement. I am positive that these things could not have happened outside of a church environment. I believe that, you know, raising kids, for example, this is a hard task. Why don't do that in a community that is uh, willing to support, is willing to spend time, is willing to support us where we are. We have weaknesses because all of us we have strengths, strengths and a bunch of weaknesses. But we know we when we are in a community of our strengths, they 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 are amplified. They come together, and all of our weaknesses, you know, they are uh, helped by some other person that in that area might be stronger. That created the atmosphere that. Uh, supported us to, you know, be a blessing to that family and for both the boy and his father to grow, you know, spiritually, mentally, intellectually, physically, in every single area uh, of their life. People that are hopeless before about themselves and about their children, about their families, they find hope in Jesus, but they also find the support in the community. And I believe that's what this boy and his father found in our church community, support, love, and people that really care for them, just like Jesus cared for them. When we work together as the body of Christ, as God intended, we are able to achieve so much more than if we work alone. The Bible compares the church to a human body, and Jesus is described as the head of the church, and we, as a congregation, are his hands and feet, the body of the church. 1 Corinthians 12 says, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many members. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that doesn't make it any less part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? When Jesus was on earth, he actively demonstrated what being the hands and feet of God's church looks like. He loved the outcasts and the unpopular, and he loved the people in society who were the most challenging and inconvenient to love. Each member of the church is like a piece of coal in the fire. When we're all placed in a heat together, we warm each other up, creating a healthy environment to shine the light of Jesus. Now, when we go out into the world each week, we can sometimes begin to feel discouraged, just like when you remove a piece of coal from the fire and it begins to cool down. When we get together each Saturday, we can encourage each other through prayer and support. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. The Bible tells us that Jesus loves his church in the same way that a groom loves his bride. A good husband will do anything to protect his wife, defending her and supporting her for better or for worse through good times and bad. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. The greatest possible love is when someone is willing to lay down their life for the person they love. This is precisely what Jesus did because of how much he loves the church. Jesus loves us unconditionally, regardless of our sin. And he also loves the church, despite the imperfect people who make up the congregation. I like how one author describes it. In spite of its faults, the church is the one object in this world upon which Jesus bestows, in a special sense, his supreme regard. It is the theater of his grace, in which he delights to reveal his power to transform people's hearts. Throughout Jesus' ministry, his disciples let him down multiple times. One of his friends, Judas, even went as far as to betray him, which directly led to Jesus' crucifixion. Despite their flaws and mistakes, Jesus still loved his disciples and offered them the grace and forgiveness of God's own heart. Just as Jesus has shown us unconditional love and grace, we are given the opportunity to mirror that same love 
to our brothers and sisters in Christ when they too stumble. We are able to experience God's transforming power in a more dynamic way in the community of church than we could ever experience alone. These days, there are so many different churches all with different ideas and beliefs. When deciding which one to go to can become very overwhelming trying to make the right choice. A good way of knowing on an intellectual level whether a particular church is a spiritually healthy place to attend is looking for one whose focus is on Jesus and who base their beliefs on the Bible and the Bible alone. The first thing that we need to focus on in finding a church is a church that is focused on Jesus Christ. There are some churches that where their attention is directed, you know, in, in, in all kinds of different ways that are very exciting. And just because it's an exciting atmosphere that is being created doesn't mean that it's actually focused on Jesus. And not just focused on Jesus, but focused on Jesus as our, as our Lord, as our Saviour and as our best friend. We've got Jesus as the center. We've got the Bible as their foundation. The Bible actually says something very significant in relationship to God's church, particularly at the end of time. And if you go to Revelation 12 and verse 17, the Bible speaks about God's church that keeps the commandments of God and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. Those are two very, very specific identifying characteristics of where we should be worshiping, of what community we should be a part of at the end of time. So what are we talking about when we're talking about the commandments? The commandments of God are the 10 commandments. You find those in Exodus chapter 20, and they're very simple, they're very straightforward. The challenge today is that many Christians have either forgotten what the commandments are or have downplayed their significance or have even taught that these have simply been done away with, that they've been replaced by, you know, just love for everybody. Now, love for everybody is at the centre of the gospel. The second part of that is a little bit more detailed. It says, and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. And this refers us directly to the gifts of the Holy Spirit in particular, the gift of prophecy. In fact, if you go over to Revelation chapter 19, John is speaking, he falls at the feet of an angel to worship this angel. The angel says, don't do that. I'm your fellow servant and of your brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, otherwise known as the gift of prophecy. And so what we find here is a church that has all of the spiritual gifts, including the gift of prophecy. And so this is where we need to be worshiping. Naturally, when we're talking about you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we're looking for a church here that is filled with the Holy Spirit, that focuses its attention on leading its believers, its members, its community to being filled with the Holy Spirit. We can know our Bibles inside out, back to front and upside down, but if we don't know Jesus and we're not filled with the Holy Spirit, then we're not going to produce any light on the world. The Bible says that we are to worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus gives a prophecy and he says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then the end will come. A key message of God's church at the end of time is the return of Christ. This is one of the central themes of the New Testament. So we're looking for a church that has a worldwide missionary focus that is focused on the return of Christ and preparing for Jesus to come back soon. Unfortunately, brings us to the end of our I Am series. But the good news is, is that the experience of being in a community of fellow believers doesn't have to end here. Over the last few months, you have come to experience what being in church is like. It's a place where we can experience acceptance and forgiveness. As the Bible says, make allowance for each other's faults. And if anyone offends you, forgive them. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others as well. Jesus also said, where two or more gather in my name, there I am with them. Having Jesus with us is a story of the whole Bible. He loves us and wants to save us. He is inviting each of you to experience the incredible power of his love in his church community. I love being part of a church that cares for those in need and shares the gospel of Jesus Christ. A church that encourages people to come into the Kingdom of God by being baptised in water and of the Holy Spirit. 
What's stopping you from becoming an active part of a local church community and making this a reality in your life? You have a purpose. You have a story to share. You can make a difference in this world for the world to come. We really hope that you've enjoyed this series with us and that you've come to grasp the width, the length, the height and the depth of the love that Jesus Christ has for you. May you come to experience this love, although it is far too big to ever understand or comprehend fully. Then you'll be made complete with the fullness of life and power that only Christ can give. Now to Him who is able to do infinitely more than we could ever ask or imagine through the power that is at work within us, to Him be the glory in the church and through Jesus Christ throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.